The technical term for the area in the church where you're sitting in your pews is called the nave. It comes from the Latin word novice, from which we get our English word navy. From the times of the early church, the idea of the assembly of the believers, what we call the church, has been that our, our gathering together and the job of the church is to be like a ship that guides us and leads us and carries us through the journey of life to our final destination. That's why so often architecturally, especially as you look at some older churches, they very much remind you of an older ship or a boat, especially if you turned them upside down. As a matter of fact, there's a church in Sable, the Episcopal Church, uh, named St. Anne's, that was actually built from the wood of the boats that came and first settled in that community, thus underscoring this exact point. And I love here at St. Paul's that our logo is a sailing boat, reminding us that we gather together in the ship of God's love, so together we can sail off through life to eternal life. And as you look around the church, there are many reminders of this symbolism. Up on the altar, our altar paraments often have a boat on them. There's a beautiful stained glass window next to the entrance door of the church, off to the right as you come in. That is another one of these beautiful sailing ships to remind us of how we journey together. And as you suspect, this is all rooted and grounded in our gospel lesson for today. This incredible event that happens at the end of a very long day between Jesus and his apostles. Today's gospel lesson is the culmination of what we've been listening to over the last three weeks. It began a few weeks ago when we heard about Jesus going around to the villages and healing the people. But the people were confused by the healing so much so that they thought Jesus had gone a little wacky and they said he was demon possessed. The apostles and Jesus' own family were confused by what he was doing. Then he goes on to tell them those stories in parables like the mustard seed that we heard last week. How incredible things can come from very small packages. So you can imagine why after such a long day filled with a little bit of controversy that Jesus might be a little bit tired and need a rest, and so he's sleeping in the boat. And yet the point of the gospel lesson for us today is that God is always with us on the journey. He's always there, especially in the midst of the storms of life. Now for me, what's really comforting about this gospel lesson is the genuine reaction of the apostles when the storm arises. They're filled with fear, they're filled with anxiety, and then we hear, in their own words, their frustrations as they even seem to get a little bit angry at Jesus. How can you still sleep in the midst of the storm? Don't you care that we're dying? Isn't this often our reaction when we're in the midst of the storms of life? Do we not sometimes question whether or not God cares, whether or not God is with us as we're sailing along in life and all of a sudden the seas become turbulent? Struggles and storms seem to attack our lives. Like those apostles, sometimes we wonder and question. And I think sometimes it's even more intensified when we feel as though the storm itself is affecting the ship, the church. When storms arise around the church or in the church, it's especially troublesome. The church, this boat that we sail together to eternal life in, is supposed to be a safe place. It's supposed to be a place of sanctuary that protects us as we travel through the seas of life. That's what makes this past week's terrible act of hatred and racism in South Carolina so especially devastating. Those people are gathered there in the church in their safety, in the comfort of God's word, to find what they needed. And that was shattered by horrific hatred and evil. And of course, it's in the midst of those type of situations that we begin to wonder and question about the will of God and the presence of God. We must always remember that the storms in life never come from the hand of God. They are a result of a broken, sin-filled world. The perfect creation that God intended in the beginning has been broken by sin and evil. And yet the reminder to us today in the midst of the gospel lesson is God is still in the ship with us, especially when the storms are affecting us in the ship as we sail through life. We must not in any way try to read into some sort of special message 
or condemnation or judgment that is coming from God towards these people in South Carolina. No. Simply put, this is a sad, tragic circumstance that's another reminder to us of the brokenness and the sin in this world. It's also a warning to us about what happens when you cease to be grounded in the baptismal gift of faith that God has given, when you turn away from the blessings that God gives. Love is replaced with hate and discrimination. And it's especially in these times that we need the assurance that Jesus is still in the boat with us. As those apostles questioned, as they grew frustrated and filled with fear, if they wondered, as they wondered if Jesus cared, <clears throat> Jesus gave them exactly what they needed. He didn't hold it against them, but we heard this. He woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. That's the point of our fellowship and our gathering together as the church. Storms are going to arise. Sometimes they're going to come out of nowhere unexpectedly. How often in life is this, the wind to our back, things are going smoothly, the sea is calm, and then out of nowhere, everything's turned upside down. That's the reality of a broken world. But in the midst of it, the reason we gather in the safety of the church, in this ship as we sail, is to hear the voice of God say to us, Peace. Be still. And God is never the cause of the storms that arise in our life, but God will use the storms for his purpose and his good. For those apostles, they were still questioning after this day where they heard Jesus had lost his mind, where he was demon-possessed. They weren't sure who Jesus was. So the storm provided for him an opportunity to show them once again what it meant for him to be the divine creator and the savior of the creation as he had power over the seas and power over the winds. And that's the same message that we get oftentimes in the midst of our storms in life. Is it not there that as we look back on the storms of our lives that we see the hand of God and the voice of God saying to us, peace, be still. The last time I preached on this gospel lesson was three years ago, and it was my last Sunday preaching at the church in Harlem. I had been sent there by the bishop to uh, be there for about a year. It was a term call, and his hope was that I would be able to reinvigorate the church, turn them around, and remind them of their mission to their community. In less than six months, it had all fallen apart. It just wasn't working out. And I was sitting in a council meeting with the church leaders the day before Father's Day. Things seemed to be doing okay. Meeting was moving along. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, without me even understanding what was happening, they decided they no longer wanted me to be their pastor. No longer wanted me to lead them. And so later on that afternoon, I was sitting in the middle of Central Park, devastated. I felt like a complete failure. And this was the first real call that I had since I made the transition from the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod over to the ELCA. So I thought for sure this was going to be the end of my pastoral ministry. People didn't really know me well enough in the ELCA to know whether or not I made this mess myself or what was the cause of all this. And in the midst of all this, this storm that surrounded me, I had to preach on this text where God says, peace, be still. That was the farthest thing from my mind. And after that, I was gone just a few days later. Three weeks later, because the pastor who was scheduled to preach here didn't have an easy means of transportation because he sold his car because he now lived in the city, said to me, would you mind taking these two weeks while Pastor Jurek is on vacation? And I was hesitant at first because I was pretty hurting, pretty lost, but on the other side of it, I figured I needed to get back on the bicycle pretty school soon, and having lost the income from the other church, a few extra bucks wouldn't hurt. Well, I guess we can see here three years later that perhaps God had a bigger picture in a bigger plan in the midst of the storm. Did he send that storm to the church? No. But God worked in the midst of that storm to accomplish his purpose and accomplish his will. And looking back, Boy, can I see clearly God saying to me, peace, be still. 
We may not see it all the time right away, but the promise of having Jesus in the ship with us is that he is on our side. So our prayer today for the people of South Carolina and Emmanuel AME Church is that over the course of time, they do hear the voice of Jesus speaking to them to bring healing. And our prayer as the church, and our prayer for every church, is that it is this safe place, this ship that sails along the seas of life, and that especially in the midst of the storms, we hear Jesus saying to us, peace, be still. Amen. Thank <clears throat> you.